If I could, I would entertain a motion to close the meeting of the whole. So moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. We'll now open the regular meeting. I'd ask you all stand for a moment of silence. Chairman, move to approve the record. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to vote, I have to remind you that this meeting is being televised live on Channel 9 and is being taped by PBD Access TV and, it, and is also being recorded by our fabulous City Council stenographer, Allison Dansford. Uh, we are going to move the agenda a little bit out of order. Um, and for the purpose of, uh, of, this, uh, he of the hearings. We're going to take first uh, 1F, the, uh, the 4F, excuse me, the uh, special permit for S Salem 5. Clerk will read the record. Clerk will read the notice. It's going to take me down all the way to the end. Notices hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody acting as a special permit granting authority will, will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 12, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass. on the application from Salem 5 Cent Savings Bank, 210 Essex Street, Salem, Mass. for a special permit seeking to operate a bank branch at 91 Linfield Street, Peabody, Mass. has filed in accordance with sections 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the, of the PBD Zoning Ordinance. PBD City Council Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Thank you. Is the petitioner here, please? If you'd mind coming to the podium, uh, please give your name and address for the record, and what would you like to do? There we go. My name is John Kosinski. Uh, 13 uh, Pat Drive in Danvers, but I'm Vice President of Facilities for Salem 5 Bank. Uh, good evening, Council Members, uh, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to uh, present our request for, the spe for this special permit. First, I'd like to take a moment to introduce others from Salem 5 who are here tonight. They include Ed Lamazny, Senior Vice President, Joe Riley, Executive Vice President, and also joining us is Chuck Holden, who is the owner of the property. I'd like to apologize for the fact that we're here tonight when we should have been here months ago. Chuck says he told us about the requirement for a special permit when we were going through the lease negotiations, and I have absolutely no reason to doubt that he did. But either I didn't hear him properly, or it all got jumbled together when we were talking about all the permits that the bank has to get from our regulators. We certainly weren't trying to sneak into South Peabody under the cover of darkness. So as soon as we realized that we had to apply for a special permit, we submitted our request, and we very much appreciate the city clerk's timely processing of that request. Our proposed bank branch would occupy about 750 square feet in Chuck's newly constructed building. The initial term of our lease is for 10 years. Having a small footprint by bank standards, we are calling this our first micro branch, but it will still provide full service for our customers. The branch will typically have two or maybe three bank employees on site with two teller lines, a manager's office, a conference room, a handicapped restroom, a small built-in kitchenette, a workroom with a refrigerator-sized vault, and an ATM vestibule. It will not have a drive-up window or drive-up ATM, nor are there any plans for those. We will also have our usual complement of security cameras and monitored alarm systems. The interior finishes and lighting will be clean and modern. 
Signage will be in accordance with the city's requirements. There is sufficient parking provided. Banking hours are expected to be Monday through Wednesday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 6, Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5, and Saturday, 9 to noon. After hours, the main lobby area will be locked, while the ATM vestibule will be accessible via a card reader activated by a bank credit card. In accordance with routine regulatory procedures, we have received permission from the FDIC and the Commonwealth's Division of Banks to open the branch. If our special permit request is approved, interior construction will commence shortly after we obtain the building permit and will take about eight weeks to finish. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak in favor of the petitioner? Anybody here wishing to speak in favor of the petitioner? Last call for in favor of the petitioner. Anyone here wishing to speak against the petitioner? Anyone here wishing to speak against the petitioner? Again, last call for against the petitioner. Seeing none, Council Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I met with uh, John and Joe uh, Riley, um, I believe it was Monday. Um, at the site. Um, they gave me a brief tour of where everything is, is going to be. I'm very confident in the location. I think it'll work well. Uh, Chuck Holden was also there. Um, there will be a 24-hour ATM. I don't believe that will be an issue. Um, the, there's three employee parking spaces, I believe, in the front, and then three additional, uh, I'm sorry, three customer spaces in the front and three additional in the rear dedicated to the bank, but there are also several dozen other spaces throughout the lot that can be used uh, for if there happens to be any overflow. Um, the benefit to, the, to being next to the liquor store, as Mr. Holden pointed out to me, uh, the hours don't conflict. Um, the bank's daytime hours, um, although some of self PBD might be at the liquor store during the daytime hours, I think the vast majority um, are at night after 5 p.m. when the bank is closed. So I think this works out well as far as um, confidence in this establishment. I mean, you look at it to the audience, the names that were read, I think everybody on this council um, has a very good working relationship with the Holden family as well as the Lamazny family and the Riley family and even the Mackey family. Um, so with that, if any problems do arise throughout the process, I think I believe they would be immediately rectified. Um, with that said, I support the project. There's not much more to say about it other than welcome to South Peabody if this council agrees. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councillors? Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm thrilled that the partnership between the Holden family and Salem Five is uh, taking place. Uh, keep up the good work, Salem Five. You become a strong member of the PBD community, and uh, we all appreciate what you do for us. And Chuck, good luck with all your ventures. You're you're doing the right thing. Thank you. Any other councillors? I would only like to say that that's one heck of a building he put up there. It really is a nice, uh, shows nice on the corner, Chuck. Yeah. Uh, I was a little curious when you had the stone going up there in the beginning, but it really blends in nicely. So uh, if there are no other councils, Council Turco. Move to close public hearing. Favor, any opposed, vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, move to approve the application of Salem Five Cent Savings Bank, 210 Essex Street, Salem, Mass., for a special permit seeking to operate a, a bank branch at 91 Linfield Street, PBD, Mass., as filed in accordance with sections 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD, PBD zoning ordinance. You've heard the motion by Councilor Turco. Councilor Rajanel. Thank you. Just a motion to receive late communication from um, Officer Richards. On a motion, all in favor, any opposed vote? You've heard the motion by Councillor Turco. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Councillor Matsoulis? Yes. Melville? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. McGinn? Yes. Rosignol? Yes. Manning Martin? Yes. Sasla? Yes. Charest? Yes. Gould? Yes. Turco? Yes. Gravel? Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. It's great to have you as neighbor. Thank you. Uh, 
I could draw the Council's attention. We'll move to item 4I. Clerk will read, right, uh, clerk will read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody, acting as a special permit granting authority, will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 12, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass., on the application from Vincent Bianco Catering, 5 Brentwood Drive, Peabody, Mass., for a special permit seeking to allow for a fast food restaurant catering business at 145 Summit Street, Unit 4, PBD Mass is filed in accordance with Section 6, uh, 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD Zoning Ordinance, PBD City Council Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Is the petitioner here? If you don't mind, you come to the podium. And if you'll state your name and the address for the record, please. It's, uh, Vincent Bianco, 5 Brentwood Drive, Peabody. Um, so uh, I'm a recent resident of the city of Peabody. I moved here about three years ago. Uh, last year I bought my mother a house in the city too, so we're very happy and uh, we do enjoy it. Um, I've been in the catering business since 2015 and in the food business, uh, business my whole life. My family owns Bianco and Son Sausages, uh, which was out of Revere, now out of Medford. Um, basically, I really do love being in the city as a resident, and this is the city that I'd like to establish my business in. Uh, with this permit, um, we would be a restaurant catering business. Um, we would be doing private dinners with people, um, focusing on catering as well. We'd be doing a lot of cooking classes, youth cooking classes. Um, I've been around food my whole life, so being around people who like to eat, that's kind of where I get my uh, joy. Um, we were recently hired by the Smith Barn um, in Peabody, which is a, a big wedding venue in the city. Um, so we're one of their caterers, and I think it would be kind of a good thing to have a caterer from Peabody who would be able to work for that, um, that um, the barn. Um, that being said, uh, it would be a big deal to uh, open up this business. Um, like I said, with my family, when you used to say the word Bianco and Sons, you thought of the city of Revere. And hopefully when people think of Bianco Catering, they'll think of Peabody. And this is definitely the city that I'd like to continue growing my business. Excellent. Is there anybody here who would like to speak in favor of the petitioner? Anybody here in favor of the petitioner? Anybody here in favor? Anybody here would like to speak against the petitioner? Anybody here against the petitioner? Please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Hasmik Berekjian. Um, I reside at 35 Crooker Drive. My name is Hasmik Berekjian. I reside at 35 Crooker Drive in Lynn, Massachusetts. I am here tonight to represent Onig Realty Trust, the owner of Summit Plaza, located at 145 A Summit Street, and our tenants. We are pleased to welcome new businesses to the area. However, we have a few concerns we'd like to express. We have had an ongoing issue with customers and employees of 145 Summit Street occupying valuable parking spaces in Summit Plaza's parking lot, which we have received numerous complaints from our tenants as a result. It is very difficult for us to enforce parking habits without any physical barriers in place, and we do not want to put them in. We want to be good neighbors. As such, we have concerns that the abutting owner's current parking lot accommodations for employees, vendors, and customers are already taxed, is more than the site can accommodate, and none of them are instructed not to park in spaces intended for Summit Plaza customers. It is a very difficult situation. Providing the abutting owner can provide an adequate number of parking spaces to support all business operations for all tenants in their building and this new tenant, then we encourage business growth in that location. However, we have serious concerns that this can be done. If the requested business evolves into a sit-down or takeout operation, things get even more difficult. 
If the abutters' parking allowances are woefully inadequate now, and they are, they will not support any new business operation at that location in the future. We are willing to work with our neighbors to find a solution if there is one, but until we are able to do that, we request that you consider the issues set out in this letter and ask our neighbor to help find a solution before compounding the existing problem. On behalf of Onig Realty Trust and all our tenants at Summit Plaza, we would like to thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Would you, would you like that letter entered to the record? Sure. Move to receive. On the motion to receive, all in favor, any opposed, vote. Is there anyone else who would like to speak against the petitioner? Anyone else who would like to speak against the petitioner? Seeing none, Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I wanted to address the uh, parking situation. Um, I, was, I had met with Vincent, I don't know, a couple months ago, Vincent, but then more recently on Monday, the same day, I met with Mr. Holden. Um, I think I counted 18 spaces there. If, if anybody knows the building, it's the Plum Tomatoes building. Um, Pat DeLeo that owns Plum Tomatoes actually owns the whole establishment. I think there's four units there. Um, one is a glass company. I'm not quite sure what the second one is, but Vincent, can you answer that with the... the yeah, there's um, Plum Tomatoes. There's a plumber who is there in the morning to take most of his, like, um, you know, whatever he needs for the day for work, and he's kind of gone, and then he parks one of his trucks in the back on the Plum Tomato property. And then there's actually nobody in Unit 3. And then, I'm sorry, and Unit 4 would be us. Thank you. So as, as far as parking, I think I counted 18 spaces there. As we know, Plum Tomatoes um, has, I think, two bar stools that you could sit down. They don't, generally don't do sit down. It's mostly takeout and, and delivery. The plumbing um, establishment doesn't have any customers that actually go to the plumbing place. It's just where he stores his equipment and operates his business from. Uh, the glass place is the same thing. Uh, there's a glass repair that's done inside, um, and very few people wait. Uh, for their glass to be repaired. Uh, the, car is, uh, well, the car is inside when it's being fixed, so there wouldn't be another car outside. Um, as far as Vincent's business, um, just so everybody knows, I, I think when we spoke, your, your intention really is that you would like to do catering um, with the, the hope or the intent of down the road uh, doing you know, fast food, takeout, uh, pre-made meals, maybe something to that effect. That will be months down the road. Um, I do believe that the 18 spaces that exi exist there are good enough for his business. Um, and, I, and again, I, I don't think it'll be a, a worry in the immediate future for the property. I was, nobody's contacted me about this from Onig, and I was, I was actually there several times, but more recently on Monday. Um, nobody from the plaza next door has contacted me. If Vincent's there for three or four months and decides that, um, you know, he would like to venture into a um, full sit-down or fast food establishment, then I will ask now, Vincent, are you, are you willing to post that, that there is no parking for your customers on behalf of Onig and his establishments um, at your expense to, to put yeah. postings up? Uh, so, yeah, would... so I, I can be very upfront with you guys. I have no interest of doing fast food compared to like a sit-down restaurant, which would be more at nighttime. Um, I did contact uh, on the phone. I tried to call a couple times. Uh, I didn't get a response just to welcome myself if something, if everything went well. Um, I understand where you're coming from, but with my business, um, I'm a very small caterer, so we don't have trucks coming in, 18 wheelers coming in delivering food and product. I own my own truck, which is a refrigerated truck, and the days that I cater, I go and pick up my product fresh, and then I drop it off. Um, Pat does have, I think it was like you said, 18 spaces in the back on his property. My truck fits right back there. I load up my refrigeration. Um, to be very honest with you, I have no intention of having multiple, multiple people because I tried to get in there the other day and it was like very difficult. So um, I actually was concerned for myself and said, well, how are people going to come in? But um, I can guarantee you that the very small amount of people um, that do come won't be parking in your area, but we're, we don't really do a lot of pickup catering. 
that'll be a lot of drop off and a lot of events outside of that area. So the only people that would come for the restaurant part would be a handful of times during the month. It would be a private dinner from probably five to eight. So I, I think during that time, it's very busy during lunch, but we will not have anything during lunch. I can guarantee you that. And the, back to the original question, you would post for them if it becomes an issue. Absolutely. Um, yeah. you, you know, a few signs that say parking or a maybe a, even a, a delineation. Anything. Thank you. So to the, to the hearing itself, um, move to receive notice from the health department uh, and the late communication from the health department. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, vote. Okay. I did meet with Vincent uh, a month or two ago, Vincent, at my yep. house, and then um, more recently on Monday. Um, I'm, I'm very happy. I think this, this is the perfect storm. Young man um, came from Revere, where I came from. Um, went to Malden Catholic also, where I went, and um, we, we kind of hit it off right away. He told me about, he's very passionate about um, his cooking. I love the fact that he just signed the agreement with the Smith Barn. Um, he has a local tie there. He moved his mother to Ward 1. He moved to Ward 1. Uh, they're invested in the community. I think this is, um, you know, a, a great story. And um, as far as the, the business itself, everybody knows from the North Shore Bianco and Sun Sausages. Um, when I heard the name, I actually got excited because I think there is a large contingent that moved up from the Riviera Everett, Medford, uh, Malden area that is very familiar with Bianco's and um, would be very happy um, to have you here. Um, so I do fully support this um, with the conditions set forth, which I'll read into the record from the health department, um, as well as your um, commitment that you will work with Onig next door if there are any parking issues. Um, and I know there have been issues um, in the past with Onig when Pat first opened the, uh, the four units over there. I thought they were resolved at this point. But uh, the onus is on you to resolve any of those issues, and, and hopefully there aren't any, but I, I would very quickly um, have you back before this council yeah. to rescind that permit if it becomes an issue for the establishments next door. But I'm confident it won't. I saw his truck. Um, it is a, a, a medium-sized refrigeration box truck. He parked it in the very back. If you have three or four or, or five cars, um, the, like I said, Pat doesn't have much traffic that goes into that plaza, so I'm, I'm very confident that you have enough uh, parking to, to handle sit-down dinners on rare occasion. If you look at the hours of operation, uh, they are kind of lengthy, and I purposely had Vincent put those in there um, until, I believe, 11 p.m. at night, Vincent, and, and that's because the catering business, you, you don't know. Um, you know, it could be a breakfast at 4 o'clock in the morning, um, or, or it could be that he won't be getting back from a wedding venue until 11 o'clock at night. So I, I was more comfortable with extending the hours uh, beyond where I normally would for an establishment like this. So again, um, I support it, and I'll open it up to the council. If I could have somebody receive the, uh, it's on your desk, the uh, report from the fire department stating no objections. So moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to vote. Councilors, any questions? Seeing none, Councilor Turco. Of course, I Mr. President, I move to close the public hearing. On the motion, close the public hearing. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the application from Vincent Bianco Catering 5 Brentwood Drive, PBD Mass, for a special permit seeking to allow for a fast food restaurant catering business at 145 Summit Street, Unit 4. PBD Mass is filed in accordance with sections 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD Zoning Ordinance with the conditions set forth from the Health Department that a plan review must be conducted by the PBD Health Department prior to the start of construction. Applicant will be required to implement an effective integrated pest management plan and also the requirement that Vincent, at his expense, address um, any parking signs um, required to prevent people from parking in the owner lot. And so moved. The uh, motion by Councilor Turco. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Councilor Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Razagrol. Yes. Meaning Martin. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. Gould. Yes. Gravel. Uh, Turco. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. Congratulations. Thank you, guys.
Good luck, sir. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. We appreciate it. We're going to move to item 4A on the agenda. Uh, the clerk will read the notice. I have to read it and then you can recess the counselor. You just got to open it. Notice is here by given that the City Council of the City PBD will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 12, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. in the Franklin Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, PBD Mass. In accordance with the provisions of Chapter 40A, Section 5 of the Massachusetts General Laws to consider amending the zoning ordinance of the City Peabody as follows. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City Peabody that the zoning ordinance entitled Zoning Ordinance 2011 as a amended through April 25, 2019 is, that by, is hereby further amended as follows. Section one, by amending section 6.16.3H, by deleting the last sentence in said paragraph as, as follows. Projects under 6.16 will require an additional 10% of the total number of units to be affordable for a minimum of 25%, and inserting in, in place thereof the following. Projects under 6.16 will require an additional 5% of the total number of units to be affordable for a minimum of 20%. Section two, all ordinances, the parts of ordinances inconsistent herewith are hereby repealed. Section three, this ordinance shall take effect as provided by law. Peabody City Council, Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Can I get a uh, motion to recess this hearing until uh, September 26th? Until September 26th. On the motion. So moved. Any, all in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. We'll move to um, item 4B on the agenda. Clerk will read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody, acting as the special permit granting authority, will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 12, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Low Street, Peabody, Mass., on the application from Clayton Cruz, 22 Union Ave, Everett, Mass., for a special permit seeking use of the premises as an office and shop for a contractor specializing in the design, construction, and installation of countertops without outdoor storage at 58 Walnut Street, PBD Mass. is filed in accordance with sections 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD Zoning Ordinance. PBD City Council Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm John Kelty, I'm an attorney. I practice law at 40 Lowell Street in Peabody, Massachusetts, and I appear on behalf of Clayton Cruz, uh, who does business as Boston uh, Granite Countertops. And uh, I've had conferences with uh, Councilor uh, Matsoulis, and uh, I would like to continue this matter until September 26th. And during this uh, period of time, uh, we're going to uh, endeavor to have a couple of inspections by Board of Health um, and uh, Building Commissioner and try to resolve a couple of uh, issues that seem to have arisen. Council Matsoulis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, there are a couple issues here, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, I'm very pro-business and I welcome business uh, new businesses into the neighborhood. I have a couple concerns here. One is uh, noise, dust, outside storage, and I'd like the health department to come down and uh, clear the air for me uh, um, so that I could get a better look at exactly what, uh, what they're doing there. And uh, I'm sure that once we get the okay from the health department and the building inspector will be uh, ready to give them their permit, but I'm, I want to get the okay from them first. So move. So I'd like to recess this till our next meeting. 
So moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you. We'll move to um, item 4C on the agenda. The clerk will read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody will conduct a public hearing on Thursday the evening, September 12, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass. on the application from Alto LLC, DBA Alto Forno, 41 Cross Street, Peabody, Mass., requesting an entertainment license for the use of non-live entertainment, specifically television, digital, internet music, and radio at said 41 Cross Street, PBD Mass. PBD City Council, Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, my name is Jason Panos, uh, practicing law at 246 Andover Street, PBD, Massachusetts, appearing on behalf of Alto LLC, doing business as Alto Forno. We're here to uh, request an entertainment license to allow for the use of a 60-inch television screen which is mounted off of the bar. Uh, it is hardly ever used, but uh, during football season they intend to use it uh, periodically. And uh, we would respectfully request permission and the entertainment license accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody here in the audience to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody in the audience here to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience here to speak in opposition to this petition? Anybody here to speak in opposition? Seeing none, Council Charest. Thank you, Council President. Um, I think we all pretty much are aware of this, this establishment. It's been there for a couple years now. I haven't heard one incident that's negative with the uh, establishment. I have heard positive things on the establishment, not just within our city, but outside the city, of people who uh, love going there. And it's a, a again, it's a, it's a beautiful building. So uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, radio, TV, uh, like you, the council said, I, I, for a football game or, or whatever entertainment it's going on that, you know, maybe music playing from the radio. Uh, spoke to the petitioner. I'm full of support of this, um, uh, um, and I know that this was a little hiccup from the past meeting that the uh, owner had apologized for that. So um, with that, I, 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 I moved to, uh, I was certainly gonna support this um, application and just open it up to the council. And before I forget, I want to thank you for the accommodation of the continuance. There was some confusion. Uh, from the last meeting, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any councilors? Seeing none, Council Charest. Thank you, Council President. I move to uh, grant the entertainment license. Councilor, could you close the public Clo hearing first? Thank you. I'd like to close the public hearing. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. With that, I'd like to approve the application from Alto LLC, D doing business as Alto Forno, 41 Cross Street, Peabody, Mass., requesting an entertainment license for the use of non-live entertainment, specifically the TV, digital, internet, music, and radio at 41 Cross Street. So move. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilor Mansoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Manning Martin. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. Gould. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Ocean carries 11 to nothing. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Before we move to item 4D, just so we can clean house a little bit here, can somebody give me a motion to receive all the late communications from police, um, excuse me, from fire and uh, health and refer them to their specific permits? So moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. And we will move to item 4D on the agenda. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 12, 2019 
at 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, period mass on the application from Viceroy Peabody, LLC, 9 Mirror Way, West Newbury, Mass, requesting the transfer of a lodging house license at 2 Main Street, Peabody, Mass, Peabody, City Council, Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Could you please state your name and address for the record and tell us what you'd like to do? There you go, sorry. My name is Sandra Capo. I live in Nymere Way in West Newbury, Massachusetts. I am a managing partner of Viceroy Peabody. Um, on August 28th, Viceroy purchased 11 buildings in the heart of downtown Peabody. And we could not be more thrilled to be part of this community. We are completely invested in keeping the integrity of the community while working closely with the town to, co to continue to create a more vibrant downtown that is safe and welcoming to our citizens and families. The day we bought our buildings, we immediately started making upgrades. Uh, we put new awnings on Little's Lane. Um, we're about to start a, a facelift at 28 Lowell, which is right next to this building. Um, just cleaning it up, putting in some new paint. We, um, at 65 Lowell, I mean, I'm sorry, at 65 Main, we started replacing carpets in the common areas and updating the lighting. Um, we are maintaining our management office on Main Street to continue to be part of uh, the downtown. We plan on to continue to provide, maintain, and improve the workforce housing that is currently in place. Um, we have no plans to change what is already there. Um, we are 100% occupied. All, all applicants are uh, screened with full background checks, um, full for credit, criminal background checks, or any sexual crimes, and um, drugs are not tolerated. Uh, and we do keep a log of all of our tenants within our buildings. Um, so thank you for giving us the opportunity to request this house license. Thank you. Is there anybody here in the audience to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody here to speak in favor? Anybody here to speak in opposition to this petition? Anybody here to speak in opposition? Seeing none, Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I've met with the applicants uh, and exchanged a bit of information uh, with them regarding this request to transfer the lodging house license to 2 Main Street. Uh, there was one open issue pending on a certificate of inspection, uh, but that certificate was actually obtained today. Um, so there are no pending issues with police, fire, or health, uh, or the building commissioner's office with respect to this property. Um, the uh, late communication that uh, were just received uh, a moment ago from fire uh, alludes to the um, alludes to the certificate of inspection but I, again I have evidence that that was obtained today uh, the health department has no issues and we have communication substantiating that from the police as well. So uh, I am supportive of the transfer uh, with the occupancy limits that are in line with those that existed on the prior license and with that I'd open it up to other councilors. Thank you Mr. President. Thank you. Any, any comments from the council? Seeing none, council again. Thank you Mr. President. Move to close public hearing. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to approve the application from Viceroy PBD LLC, 9 Mirror Way, West Newbury, Mass, requesting the transfer of a lodging house license at 2 Main Street, PBD, Mass, with the following condition. Uh, one, that the license is for 26 rooms with a maximum occupancy of 30 persons, and two, that a register be kept of all persons occupying the premises. So moved. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis? Yes. Melville? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. McGinn? Yes. Rosignol? Yes. Manning Martin? Yes. Sasla? Yes. Charest? Yes. Gould? Yes. Gravel? 
Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. Thank you. We will move to item 4E on the agenda. Um, the petitioner approached the podium and state your name and address for the record, and I think you could hope the clerk will read the notice. My apologies first. <laughs> notice is here by given that the City Council of the City PBD will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 12, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, PBD Mass., on the application from Viceroy Peabody LLC 9 Miraway West Newbury Mass requesting the transfer of a lodging house license at 65 Main Street Peabody Mass Peabody City Council Councilor John G. Turco City Council President. And now if you could state your name and address for the record um, and you've already described what you would like to do. My name is Sandra Capo. I live in Nymera Way, West Newbury, Mass. I'm the managing partner of Viceroy Peabody, and it's the same as what I just previously said. So. And is there anybody here in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience here to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody here in the audience to speak in opposition? Anybody in the audience here to speak in opposition? Seeing none, Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, consistent with the with the situation at 2 Main Street. This, in the last public hearing, uh, this situation at 65 Main Street is identical. Um, and so I am supportive of the transfer, uh, again, with the same occupancy limits that were in line with the uh, existed on the prior license. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll open it up to other councils or other comments. Thank you. Any comments from the council? Seeing none, Council again. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to close the public hearing. All in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to approve the application from Viceroy Peabody LLC, Nine Mirror Way, West Newbury, Mass., requesting a transfer of a lodging license at 65 Main Street, Peabody, Mass., with the following conditions. That the license is for 33 rooms with a maximum occupancy of 42 persons, and two, that a register be kept of all persons occupying the premises. So moved. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis? Yes. Melville? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. McGinn? Yes. Rosignol? Yes. Manning Martin? Yes. Sasla? Yes. Charest? Yes. Gould? Yes. Gravel? Yes. Turco? Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. We're going to move to item 4G on the agenda. Item 4G, the clerk will read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody, acting as the Special Permit Granting Authority, will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 12, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass., on the application from Bahibish Kumar Patel, 65 Central Street, Peabody, Mass., for a special permit to allow for the retail sales of beer and wine packaged alcoholic beverages at 116 Central Street, PBD Mass, as filed in accordance with sections 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD Zoning Ordinance, PBD City Council Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the City Council. My name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney and I practice law at 40 Lowell Street myself. in Peabody, Massachusetts. <laughs> and I um, appear this evening on behalf of the operators, uh, the Patels, who were the operators of uh, Town Variety, located at uh, 116 Central Street in Mr. Peabody. Mr. Kelty, can I just interrupt you yeah. for one second? My, my mistake, uh, Council Melville had to speak before you. Um, Council Melville. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, just in my day job is I'm the Director of Licensing for the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission, and to avoid any hint of conflict, I'm just going to recuse myself from this particular uh, special permit hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor, and thank you, Attorney Kelty. Um, you can continue. My apologies. Yep. So um, this petition this evening is to add uh, the sale of beer and wine uh, at 116 Central Street, uh, which is the premises known as Town Variety. Uh, if we were granted this special permit, we would then uh, apply to the, um, the um, licensing board uh, 
uh, for beer and wine license for use in the premises. I do have a, a floor plan done by uh, an architect if, uh, if you're of a mind to uh, see uh, the change layout. What it is is we'll add some refrigerators and then uh, we'll have beer and wine in the refrigerators which will be on the left hand side of the premises. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have this evening. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience here to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody here to speak in favor? Anybody here to speak in opposition to this petition? Anybody here to speak in opposition? Seeing none, Councillor Matsoulas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I guess my first question to you, Jack, would be, is uh, there a license available? Uh, I had inquired several months ago, and yes, that was the case. Uh, and um, so we would be applying immediately and are hopeful that that's still there. I don't know of uh, them having given one out. Uh, okay, all right, I was curious about that. Um, also, um, it's, it's not new the variety stores have, pack, they have liquor licenses now. Uh, that precedence has been uh, set a while ago, I think maybe three or four years ago was when started allowing uh, uh, variety stores to sell beer and wine. And uh, I don't have a problem with that. I don't, uh, I don't think we've had any problems throughout the city uh, with any of the variety stores selling uh, beer and wine. Um, I, we got a late communication that uh, I'm really not concerned with, but I, I think that should be known. It came from the uh, uh, Board of Health and uh, that, that location in 8.30, 18, sold a pack of cigarettes and were, uh, uh, were penalized 100. They were assessed a $100 fine. So I thought that, you know, we would all know this. I mean, that's not enough for me to deny this, uh, this application. I know the applicant, and I see the operation he runs, and uh, I, I don't have a problem with him selling beer and wine at that location. He has plenty of room inside, and uh, um, one of the things that I would request where he'll be selling, and he, I'm sure he probably does that now anyways, to uh, uh, put some type of training in place so that whoever is there when they're selling uh, beer and wine, they'll know what they're doing and they'll check their uh, customers the proper way. Uh, counselors, I have no further questions, so I'll leave it up to you. Any, Any questions about the council? Council Rosignol. Uh, thank you. Uh, through you to Councilor Matsoulis, are you going to make that part of your orders and condition? Okay. Thank you. Any other councilors? Seeing none, Councilor Matsoulis. A uh, motion to close the public hearing, Mr. Chairman. All in favor? Any opposed? to <coughs> a vote. Council Matsoulis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now I'd like to make a motion to approve a special permit for Vivesh Kumar Patel doing business at 116 uh, Central Street for the purpose of allowing the retail sale of beer and wine packaged alcoholic beverages with the condition of uh, put a training program in place for the person sell or whoever is selling alcohol and uh, was in charge of selling alcohol at that site. So moved, Mr. Chairman. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. School. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 10 to nothing, one absent. Good luck. Thank you, Councilors. We will move to item 4H on the agenda. 
The clerk will read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody, acting as a special permit granting authority, will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 12, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wagon Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass., on the application from Maddie's Car Wash, Inc., 300 Andover Street, Peabody, Mass., for a special permit seeking to install a digital message board affixed to an existing freestanding sign at said 300 Andover Street, Peabody, Mass., is filed in accordance with sections 6.1, 11.4.8, and 15.7 of the Peabody Zoning Ordinance. Peabody City Council, Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Please state your name and address for the record and tell us what you'd like to do. My name is Michael DiOrio, 1405 Kirkbride Drive, Danvers. I am here to represent Maddie's Car Wash at 300 Andover Street. Uh, we're petitioning a four by eight LED digital message board um, with a concrete and rebar erection on an existing freestanding sign. Um, the sign weighs about 700 pounds. Um, new steel erection and existing sign will be wrapped in an element so the structure looks like one unit. The LED unit boards will be flushed back to back, one facing the eastbound side of 114 and one facing the westbound side. And there will be vented filler panels uh, also installed for ventilation. Um, I'm sure people have questions, so if there's anything that I can't answer, I have my salesperson, uh, Fred, from Optech Signs here. But um, I'll entertain any questions that anybody has, so go ahead. Is there anybody here in the audience? Thank you. Is there anybody here in the audience to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody here to speak in favor? Anybody here in the audience to speak in opposition to this petition? Anybody to speak in opposition? Seeing none, Councilor Charest. Thank you, Council, Pre Council President. Um, I've been to the property. I, I met with Michael. I actually met with his, his father. Also looked at what he's uh, proposing to do. Basically, um, it, it, States for itself is looking to add on a, an existing digital uh, digital reader to the uh, sign, but support the frame of the sign itself. Uh, I think that's only a, a, a good thing of the reinforcement of the sign. I think most of us seen or maybe have been through the establishment sees that he keeps it in a uh, in pristine conditions and. Um, the grounds and inside. Uh, I was there the other day, it went through and there was a brand new Lamborghini in the uh, self car washing uh, being cleaned up. So uh, if a, a person is bringing this brand new Lamborghini to the establishment, I, I think they probably feel safe and secure there. Um, there's really never been any issues that I'm aware of with Maddie's. I know there are some concerns with some people uh, behind um, uh, in the development, the neighborhood there with noise, it was never coming from Maddie himself, but he took steps to make sure that the police knows to come and to inspect any time there is cars parked there when the business is enclosed, and they have done so, and I know the residents were pretty happy with that. So as a neighbor, uh, I think he, he's been showing the, um, you know, what a neighbor should be doing as a business. Um, I have no other further questions. Oh, I guess I'll back up. On this, um, the lighting, the only one concern is uh, the brightness of the light. Can you talk to me about that and, and how that works? So LED is measured in nits. When it comes out of the box, it's about 7,000 nits. At nighttime, what will happen is it will reduce 30%. So it'll run at about 4,700 nits. Um, we will abide by any type of you know regulations or codes that you have because it won't scroll there's going to be no animation there's going to be no flashing so we just want to create more business my competition has it he he's a friend of mine with you know he's been successful with it and um and and that's basically it you know i'm, I'm not looking to light up 114 like a christmas tree you know um just you know looking for an advantage, that's all. Sure, and so you'd be willing that if, if there's a complaints with the neighbors, at, if there ever is, because I believe there's no spillage of, of light going into the neighborhood anyways, that you'd be more than willing to work with reducing it. Absolutely. Sure, great, thank you. I all have right. no other further questions. Thank you. 
Any questions from the council? Seeing none, council to rest. I'd like to close the public hearing. All in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. At this time, I'd like to go forward and move to approve the special permit for Maddie Car Wash, Inc., 300 Andover Street, Peabody, Mass., for a special permit seeking to install a digital message board affixed to an existing freestanding sign at 300 Andover Street, Peabody, Mass., uh, filing in accordance of Section 6.1, 11.4, 8 and 15.7 by the Peabody Zoning Ordinance. So move. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. Gould. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Motion carries 11 to nothing. I just want to thank this lady on the end over here. For someone who's not, like myself, who's not familiar with the process, you were great in guiding me through everything. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Clerk, would you make sure that's in, the, um, in our minutes? That doesn't happen very often. And, and you, you touched on something that we experience all the time, the great work at the city clerk's office. So thank you. Move to uh, item five on the agenda, reports of committees. Council Gravel. Thank you, Council President. There was a uh, meeting of the Finance Committee this evening, uh, which was held at 6.30 here in the uh, Wigan Auditorium. Present for the committee were myself as chair, Council Gould, Council Manning Martin, Council McGinn, and Council Rosignol, uh, as well as all other councilors were present. First item on the agenda was a bond order for a feasibility study for Welsh school repairs and renovations in the amount of $1.2 million. The a vote is, was required um, before we can get any funding or access to any funding for this school that needs a lot of repairs. We have to provide this feasibility study, which also contained uh, engineering and architectural costs associated with that. Um, Motion was made and approved by the committee. The motion is as follows. That the City of PBD appropriate the amount of $1,200,000 for the purpose of paying costs of a feasibility study to, to determine the need and cost of potential renovation, modernization, repair, upgrades, construction, reconstruction, and or modernization of the William A. Welch Elementary School located at 50 Swampscott Avenue, Peabody, Massachusetts including the payment of all costs, incidental or related thereto, and for which the City of Peabody may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, MSBA, set amount to be expended under the direction of the City of Peabody Welsh, school Element Welsh Elementary School Building Committee. To meet this appropriation, the City Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow set amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, or pursuant to any other enabling authority that any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bond or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by the, this vote in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. The City of Peabody acknowledges that the MB MSBA's grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need, as determined by the MSBA, and any cost the City of Peabody incurs in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the City of Peabody, and that the amount of borrowing authorized pursuant to this vote shall be reduced by any grant amount set forth in the feasibility study agreement that may be executed between the City of Peabody and the MSBA, and that this order be adopted as advertised, as advertised. That this order be adopted, that this order be advertised, <laughs> and not adopted yet as read. Not according to the script, but I'll play. <laughs> On the motion, the roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Meaning Martin. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. Gould. Yes. Gravel. 
Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. <laughs> Councilor Gravel. <laughs> uh, seven meetings to go, and he's going to bust me on the, after 20 years. So, so anyway. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean that. Uh, <laughs> second item on the agenda was a transfer request of a uh, to clean up the books for last year, um, an amount to be transferred from police salaries to to pay for solid waste recycling, uh, an amount that went a little bit over budget. Uh, the request was, and the motion that was made was to. Uh, use $104,578.26 from police salaries, account 100 110 and move it to solid waste recycling, account 100 4310 in a similar amount of $104,578.26, so moved. On the motion. Roll call vote. Councilor Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Meeting Martin. Sasla. Yes. Charis. Yes. School. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. The uh, next item on the agenda was uh, a favorite of mine. It was a, uh, a Brooksby Farm uh, request to purchase a new donut fryer because the existing donut fryer is in desperate need of repair. Um, a motion was made and approved by the committee to yeah. request from the Brooksby Farm Revolving Fund, account 260-00-0003-56-03, an amount of $39,682.40 to <laughs> capital equipment Account 300 09421 in the amount of $39,682.40. So moved. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Yenning Martin. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. Gould. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 9. The uh, next item on the agenda, we received some money from the, for the, from the Comcast for the Cable Fund, and uh, we're in need of transferring that money to the Cable Fund expense account. Um, so the request was uh, to move from receipts reserved Cable Fund Account number 270-0000-33017, an amount of $235,489.54 to cable fund expense. Account 270-0000-53007, an amount of $235,489.54. So moved. On the motion. Roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charis. Yes. School. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. The next item on the agenda was to transfer funds from the CPC Open Space Fund balance in the amount of $13,300.36 to the CPC Memorial and Flagpoles project a similar amount, so it's coming from account 270-0000-33021 to account number 270-1811-5856-220-20-00382 for a similar amount of $13,336, so moved. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Manning Martin, Sasla, yes. Charis, yes. School, yes. Gravel, yes. Turco, yes. Ocean Carriage, Lens, nothing. The uh, next item on the agenda was uh, a request to transfer money from Chapter 90 projects to road improvement projects. The amount of the uh, transfer 
which would be coming from account 2503475 is $1,248,141 and it's going to the road improvements project 2504210858134 in the amount of $1,248,141 so moved. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilor Matsoulis. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. Finally, there was a request for some improvements to be made at Cedar Grove, and the request was to move from cemetery lots, from the sale of cemetery lots and graves, account 2703306 an amount of $56,750, and from the Cemetery Perpetual Care Fund, account number 500-0000-32303, an amount of $100,000. And place it in the Cemetery Capital Improvement Projects, uh, account number 300-0491058608, an amount of $156,750, so moved. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis, Melville, yes. O'Neill, yes. McGinn, yes. Rosignol, Man yes. Manning Martin, yes. Sasla, yes. Charest, yes. Gould, yes. Gravel, yes. Turco, yes. Motion carries 11 to nothing. Fortunately, there are no other motions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, the only other committee was the Committee of the Whole, which we, we convened into an executive session to discuss uh, litigation uh, between the City of Peabody and Verizon Wireless. Uh, we'll move to item six on the agenda, motions, orders, and resolutions. Council Matsoulis. I have no motions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council Melville. Thank you, Mr. President. I do have one motion. Uh, I've been going for my job throughout the state meeting with cities and towns um, and it gives me a really good opportunity when it's a whole group together we can kind of find out what's going trending and one of the big issues that's happening and I don't I'm not seeing a lot of press on it is cyber security within municipalities and I had yesterday and there were three communities that, that actually got ransomed where essentially their system got taken over and they had to pay a certain amount of money to get it freed up and they actually paid it um, to do so and it varied in the amounts and, and whatnot, but um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, request an update or maybe a briefing just on the city cybersecurity and what we can do to enhance that security. And you know, I understand that they might not want to advertise what their what their exposures are, so we can always figure out a way that they can brief us on what they need and what we can help get um, in a setting that they feel appropriate. So I would, I'd like to make that in the form of motion, Mr. President. Okay, and that'll be a committee of the whole or a, a specific subcommittee in mind or just committee of the whole? Um, maybe we can, yeah, we can, maybe we, we can work with them to find out the best way to get that. I, I, the reason I mentioned that is if, if there's, you know, I wouldn't want our IT department to come back and say, you know, we're really not prepared for this to happen and they say it in public session and we might be exposing ourselves. So I would maybe put it on them to find out the best way that they could uh, provide us with that information. Okay, on the motion, and Council Gravel. Yes, uh, when uh, Ryan, when Council Melville uh, talked to me about it uh, this evening, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not only rampant in government, it's rampant throughout industry right now. Uh, ransomware is one of the top cyber crimes um, because it's uh, very difficult to resolve. Um, as a matter of fact, if you're not of a certain size, uh, you can register it with the FBI and basically they'll put you on the list. Um, it's kind of like the road list and the sidewalk list. Um, so you know, they'll get to it when they get to it. Um, and uh, but some cities have been hit pretty hard. New Bedford just got hit pretty hard. Uh, there have been uh, cities that have lost their entire database. You know, if they're not able to pay the ransom, the ransom always has to be paid in Bitcoin. And uh, most cities and towns don't have a Bitcoin account. There are restrictions on Bitcoins in terms of how much you can collect in a day. Twenty-five thousand dollars is the maximum Bitcoin you can buy a day. Most of the commercial accounts. So there's, there's a lot of things that, that focus around it. I think, um, 
you know, in, in looking at this, I think you, you, you're doing the city a, a big favor, and the thing that they should be looking at is doing either an IT risk assessment, a vulnerability assessment, and a penetration test, and then looking at the disaster recovery backup plans and at, from a perspective of the reality of recovering the data, because the best solution for ransomware is not to have to pay the ransom because you've replicated the data and the programs elsewhere and you can recover them on your own. Uh, it's when you don't have those extra backups and so uh, that it becomes very dangerous because you have no other choice but to either pay the ransom or suffer the data loss. And uh, there aren't tools out there to, d to decrypt. There's some that are available, but they're not very um, reliable because every ransomware has its own kind of encryption pattern to it. Um, so I, I think it's a great idea, and it should be done, you know, kind of post haste, um, because we, as we t we tell our customers, it's not if it's when you get attacked. Thank you. Any other comments on the motion? All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council Melville. Uh, no other motions this evening. Thank you. Councilor O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. No motions tonight. Thank you, Councilor. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. On the suspension of the rules, uh, move to receive item 7B and refer to executive session. So moved. On the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. On the suspension of the rules, move to receive item 7C. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. On the suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8C. And on the motion, um, I believe we need to sign that. So to approve. We need, so motion is to uh, receive and approve and then make sure councilors stay put to sign it. Thank you. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to vote? Thank you, Mr. President. On the suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8D and refer to that matter which took place earlier this evening in finance, so moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor. Any no further, further motions? motions? Thank you, Mr. President. Councillor Rosignol. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, under suspension of the rules, motion to receive and approve 9B. Uh, all papers being in order. Uh, application to use the Franklin Wiggins Auditorium for the, from the PBD Rec Department. So moved. Thank you, Councillor. You want to do all three uh, there under 9B so that we can, for PBD Rec and the other two? So moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. I'd uh, like to make a motion um, to you, Mr. Spanos. Um, could you please set up a meeting with the um, members of the school committee for the joint ad hoc city council and school committee? Um, subject matter being school start times, an update slash introduction on the principal for the high school as well as the uh, high school um, bus fees. Thank you. No further motions. Councilor, I know we discussed this in budget. Could I add to that motion to also add to the discussion the, uh, the parking fees um, as that's, well as, oh, you said bus fees. So that, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Okay. B parking fee. Okay. Thank Correct. you. Correct. So moved. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. No further motions, Council. Council Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Under suspension of the rules, motion to receive item 8F. So moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you. I'd also like to uh, make a motion to invite DPW and the mayor to come to the council to discuss improving and increasing yard waste pickup. So moved. Yeah, would that be to a subcommittee council or, or committee of the whole or do you care? Or, or? I, don't have a, I don't have a preference, whatever you, you decide. Council President, if I may, I, I believe I set up, I uh, asked Tim to set up in the last couple meetings a, 
a subcommittee of the Public Works. Um, so that, if that's being established, I welcome Councillor Manning's motion into that's that. Right, no objection, Councillor Manning. No Move. objection, and if you could just invite the mayor as we discussed sure. earlier this evening. Thank you. On the motion, all in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote, Councillor Manning. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I would like to make a co-motion with Councillor Mutsulis of Ward 3 to have the PBD police uh, review and advise on a parking situation on Walter Road, specifically number four and number five, Walter Road. We have a couple of senior citizens on that road that are having difficulty accessing their driveways because there are um, businesses that the uh, workers or the staff are parking on the street. So if they could review and assess whether um, it should be residents only or if they, uh, they sh we should request um, handicap parking signs for them. But they're having a hard time down there, so so moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Council Mayor Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No further motions. Council Sassler. Thank you, Chairman. The suspension rules item, motion receive item 8A. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Suspension of rules, motion receive item 8B. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Suspension of rules, uh, motion receive item 8G, and transfer all papers being in order. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Yes, I'd like to also make a motion to the Department of Public Services to, to patch 27 Gooddale Street. Uh, it, it has multiple potholes, so move. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to vote? I'd like to make a motion to the tree department to please trim the tree at the corner of Lindau and Lake Street so that the stop sign is not blocked and will be visible. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to vote? I'd like to also make a motion again for the tree department to trim the tree at the corner of Lowell and Goodale heading west so that the stop sign is not blocked and is visible. So move. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to vote? No further motions. Councilors, H, yours, I don't know, zero, new brand. I don't know if that's yours. Or it's route one, I think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, motion to receive item 8H. Thank you. And also um, 7A, is that, that's yours. A motion to receive item 7A. All in favor, any opposed to vote? Uh, Council, let your rest. Thank you. I'd like to, under suspension of the rules, uh, <clears throat> accept communication of 8E. So move. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. I'd like to make a motion for the branches on the top of Cross Street in Prospect uh, that's blocking the sign, stop sign, and uh, one way to be trimmed by the street department and ask for DPW to put up another one-way sign. Uh, cars are continuing to go down that one way, the opposite direction, so move. All in favor, any opposed to vote? I'd like to ask DPW to erect a sign uh, warning of children at play at the uh, intersection of Page and Long Street, so move. All in favor, any opposed to vote? I'd like uh, to just re uh, point of information for people. Um, we just recently got the okay from DOT to change the painted arrows on Lowell Street just by 128 heading east. There's a left-hand turn painted arrow with a straight arrow and a stop line painted. Uh, DPW, um, DOT has approved to eliminating the straight arrow at that in, uh, bridge so and enhance the stop line also. What's happening is people coming down on, on the left-hand side of Lowell Street and continuing to go underneath the bridge to take a left to go north. What's happening is cars who are coming off 128, turning left onto um, Lowell Street, uh, having near misses. Uh, it's very dangerous, so DPW is uh, working with the police, or the police is working with the DPW to do that. The police said they will be out there to um, 
and enforce and educate drivers in the near future. So for people just be uh, aware of that. So move. Um, Council, that wasn't a motion, that was just information. Just correct? information, yes, I'm sorry. And I, I like to be able to get uh, an update from the tree department on um, where the list for tree removal is. I know we have a long list, I know we're shorthanded, but if you know residents are calling me up and saying I put the request in, and I have no idea how long and anything else they are, but if they can give us a kind of a, a, a playlist where they're working from, so move. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to, to vote? And that is it at, at this point. Thank you. Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to see if we can schedule a municipal safety meeting, Tim, to uh, finally approve the new ordinance for Gardner Street. Captain Richards has the language ready to go. Can we do that on the 26th? Okay. So moved. On well, the motion, all in favor. Actually, that's it's, not a motion. Yeah, just Sorry. A request. Yeah, um, I have it. And also, Tim and Allison, the bag ban. Uh, I'd like to get moving on that. So, can we schedule an industrial community development? It doesn't have to be a long one, uh, because I think Sharon and Kurt Bellavance have the language ready. I hope they have the language ready. Can we do that on the 26th also? Um, I don't know. I'll have to look, Council. Right now we have two committees scheduled. We have legal affairs at 645. Okay. And now we're going to do municipal safety 6 o'clock, 615. Yeah. Are you okay with that, Council? Sorry, I should have asked 615? I did ask you, but I should have confirmed it. You want to do the bag ban for the following meeting? Okay. I don't know how far out you want to go, but... I don't want to go too far out. Yeah. I don't know if they're ready yet, so... Okay. Kurt's away till next week, so I... Okay. Don't All right, so we'll touch go... Touch base with them. So we'll... I'll get in touch with them. We'll go the second... The first meeting in October. First meeting in October, please. And all of us received... Uh, thank you, by the way. All of us received this letter from... Uh, unsigned letter, unfortunately, but still concerns about 9 Endicott Street and the conditions that exist there. I drive by there every day, and uh, I don't want to disparage anyone, but it just it's a nightmare. I, I'm looking for a recommendation on the best way to handle that. Councilor Manning Martin, you're pretty good at that stuff. You think I request the police to come and or the I inspectional would, I would um, send the um, building commissioner down there to check to see what they're permitted for for vehicles and also storage if they're selling vehicles. Okay. <clears throat> and and the building commissioner will um, request the police to assist okay. if they need it. In that uh, nine Endicott Street, the Sitco Station in Wilson Square. Thank you, Councilor Manning. Yeah, that's in the form of a motion, please, Mr. President. On the motion, all in favor? On the, oh, Council McGinn. I'm just going by the language. Yeah, this so is, through you to Council Gould, should we receive this? So that yes, please. Yes, please. Motion to receive. Motion to receive a late communication. All in favor, any opposed? Right, I'm sorry. The Nine Endicott is the house and the Sitco station. So it is, it's the Sitco station. The house in the back. Yeah, it's that whole area, that corner lot. Thank you. So moved. On the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. No further motions, Mr. President. Councilor Gravel. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I have one uh, request. I'll put it in the form of a motion. But uh, having um, been down at the International Festival and walking up Washington Street, um, I know there's, we own the, the Shea building and we own the church and um, the, the yards themselves and the bushes and such are getting in kind of a disarray. Uh, I, I'd like to find out if the mayor can have either Parks and Rec or um, Public Works go and 
trim up, trim it up a little bit. I mean, it's it's bad enough. It looks abandoned, but you know, stuff is now starting to hang over quite a bit, and uh, it just is not a good um, signal for the city to send that on its home property. It's not keeping it clean. So I'll make a I'll, I'll make it in the form of a motion, but it's really a request to see if there's anything we can do to just spiff it up a little bit. To, Looks neat. On the motion. All in favor, any opposed? Oh, Council Charest on the motion. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. And then, uh, yeah, this is not a motion, but it's a uh, um, informational, if I could. Um, you know, there are a lot of ways to help kids in the community, and um, one of the ways to help kids is to give them a place to go and a place where they can feel safe and that they can participate. And um, our YMCA does all of that, and it does that through donated funds, really. Um, we provide literally summer camp afternoon programs and use of the facility to thousands of kids who can't afford it. Um, we even have a what we call a car to kids programs where we go to the DSS and we pick up the kids who've been dropped off at DSS who've been taken away from their parents and provide them with a safe place and a fun place to be for a day. All of that costs money. And there's a way that everybody can help support this uh, on September 28th uh, of this month, obviously, that we're, we're having our Where, Where in the World Gala again. This will be the third year that we've done it. Um, your way of giving back could be just coming to participate and having a great meal with foods from around the world, participating either in the silent or the live auction, um, having some drinks, and enjoying other people's company in a, in a, YMCA, a YMCA that is fully dressed up like a uh, airline terminal, and then possibly winning a trip for two anywhere in the world for dinner. And you get to pick the location. The first year's winners picked Australia and New Zealand. And last year's winner picked Ireland and Scotland, actually stayed in a uh, thousand year old castle and had dinner in that castle. Um, and who knows if you're the winner where you would pick. But uh, it's a great way to have some fun and at the same time um, you're doing really a lot of good things for a lot of kids um, who are behind the scene all the time and nobody sees them. Uh, but we got a chance this summer to see the benefits of literally thousands of kids across the Metro North area who got to benefit from the proceeds that come from this. 100% of the proceeds from this event go directly to supporting kids going to programs. So thanks. If you'd consider it, just go on to uh, Metro North YMCA, and you'll find the, the tabs there to just get, get tickets and, and really have a great time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Rob. I just have two motions. Um, if we could have a motion to have DPS install a, uh, a new stop sign to replace the faded and non existent um, coloring of the stop sign at the corner of Glendale and Granite Ave. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Second um, and last motion um, to install a no parking here at a corner sign on Lynn Street just prior to Fairview Ave um, because there's, there's a sight line issue and that's the DPS obviously again. Um, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Um, could somebody please take items 9A, C, and D? Mr. President. Move to approve all papers being ordered. Uh, taxi and limousine driver's license, Kevin Parker, license 41, Dennis Giannis, license 42, Donald Lamontang, license 43, Kimberly Kloslowski, license 44. So moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to vote? Thank you, Mr. President. Move to approve class one motor vehicle license for Tesla Motors, Mass Inc., Councilor and Andover Mc Street. Uh, and set up a public hearing, so moved. <laughs> on, the, on the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to approve utilities contractors license 
uh, Communication Construction Group, 1060 Andrew Road, Westchester, Pennsylvania. Receive and approve all papers being in order. All in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adjourn. Councilor Charest. I'm, I'm sorry, I had just missed one, um, one subject. Uh, I, the superintendent and uh, cemeteries were here earlier and speaking on um, renovations and repairs to the chapel. Uh, several months ago, we had the uh, superintendent from the SS Aggie Tech here and talking about any projects that the city may have on city property, city owned property, and our private property that'd be interested in, in uh, doing work study and uh, repairs on. So, could we reach, ask the, the superintendent of, of cemeteries to reach out? to the superintendent of the school to see if that's something they uh, can partake in. And it's certainly, I, I don't see any better cause than our beautiful cemeteries to have uh, people, the children there work on it. On Th the so moved. Thank you, Council. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. And could somebody receive my late communication, uh, my submittal uh, for On the motion, all in favor, any opposed? Council McGinn. In, in motion to adjourn. In, on the motion, all in favor, any opposed? Have a good night.